What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the wood shop. My wife and I just snuck away for a week vacation, so sorry for not posting for the last couple weeks. We're back in action. Today, we're taking this five quarter white oak, turning it into a beautiful floating nightstand. Come check it out. So today we're going to build this floating nightstand. Floating pieces of furniture are super cool because it eliminates the legs or a base that might be underfoot. It's an awesome super simple method of making kind of a modern style piece of furniture that just mounts to the wall. We have some five quarter white oak here that is about 11 inches wide. I pre-processed these pieces. This portion will be the two sides, the left and right. And this piece will be cut in half and mitered to be the top and bottom of the nightstand. This is an awesome DIY project to mess around with yourself. Usually you could find any piece of material at the hardware store, whether it even be plywood, and do something that's a similar design to this to achieve a really nice aesthetic. So our finished depth for the nightstand is going to be 10 inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to rip these pieces down. We're going to make sure that we have the side that we want. On the front edge of this whole nightstand, we're going to taper the boards 15 degrees to make a bevel all the way around the front edge of the nightstand here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tilt the blade on the table saw to 15 degrees and cut it so that the blade cuts flush with this finished top edge here. That'll leave us 10 inches of depth and then we'll be able to miter all the corner or miter all the sides rather to be able to glue this thing up. So we're going to move it to 15 degrees. We're going to adjust the table saw so that the blade will just barely meet the top edge. We'll do it on the piece for the sides. Now that we have that bevel all the way across, we can start marking out all of our miter cuts here. So the way that we're gonna cut our miters is with a track saw. The track saw is probably one of the most accurate tools for cutting miters on the end of wider pieces of material. You can totally cut these miters with a regular chop saw, especially because this width is only 10 inches. So you'd be able to make a full cut on a compound sliding miter saw uh, to make that 45 degree angle. You could also do it passing it through the table saw on edge. But if there's any variations in the board, any torquing or twisting, uh, we find it's easiest to do it with a track saw. So we have our track saw tilted to the 45 degree miter angle. We have the track clamped to the piece of uh, material that we're going to be cutting. You always want to make sure, especially when you're cutting smaller pieces of material, that you just have your piece clamped so it's not going anywhere. That just makes sure you're safe and your piece of work isn't going to fall over while you're cutting it.
So we have all of our pieces cut. We have the 15 degree bevel on the front edge and we have the 45 degree miters for all the corners. We're just gonna mock it all up, make sure that everything fits well together, which it looks like it does. All of our edges, once we get them all clamped, will definitely be working pretty well together. What I like to do when I'm clamping uh, something small like this that has all of these mitered edges is get it on something that I know is nice and flat. I just have a scrap piece of plywood here. What's nice too is when I glue this up, there will be squeeze out, which means just the compression of the clamping will make sque uh, glue squeeze out of the seam. And I don't really care. It's on this scrap piece of plywood. It's not getting everywhere. I can toss this thing afterwards. But it looks like everything is pretty well fit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it apart, get it all glued up, clamp it all together. So what I do here is I'm just gonna lay a clamp down here at the bottom on both sides. What this is gonna do is allow us to know that the bottom of this little cabinet is not gonna kick out. If you think about all the mitered edges, you can see here, they slide against each other on the 45 degree. So what we're gonna do is we need to clamp both directions at the same time to make sure that we're not uh, separating all the pieces. All right, so we just got this nightstand glued up. As you can see, it's really just an open-faced box that's gonna be mounted to the wall. You could put a alarm clock or a small lamp or book, your you know, phone while it's charging overnight. What we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this in the clamps overnight, pop it out tomorrow, we'll sand it, we'll make the French cleat for it, boil it up and be out the door. Alrighty, so we just got the nightstand out of the clamps. It's super solid, came out really nice and square. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get a once over sanding to remove all of the glue squeeze out. We're just gonna straighten everything up. We'll build the French cleat for it and that'll be pretty much ready for finish after that point, after a little bit more sanding. So we'll get this thing sanded up. Right now we just have 150 grit on the Rotax. Get it kind of a quick once over. Be ready to move on to the next step here. All right, so everything turned out looking pretty good now that we can kind of see all of the corners. We have a little bit of filling to do. Some of the miters have just a hair bit of gapping, but that's pretty standard for something this size. It is hard to get 45 degree miters to fit perfectly together along a longer line. So we'll just do a little bit of putty back filling with enough sanding and the uh, finishing oil really It'll turn out pretty perfect here. So we're gonna jump over, we're gonna make the French cleat, which will just be mounted on the inside of the back of the nightstand. And this will be the way that we mount the nightstand to the wall. If you've been in uh, our YouTube channel before, you've seen us do French cleats on that floating bathroom vanity video, which we will post uh, right over here, I guess. Uh, if you want to check that out. This is actually going to the same house, which is probably, if you had seen that video, why you're wondering if, uh, if it was the same exact style as that floating vanity. Uh, it is, it's going to the same house, same people. So we're excited to be building a couple pieces for these guys. We'll jump over to the table saw. We'll make this French cleat real fast. We'll get it in and then we're pretty much good to go. All right, so we just cut this block of wood that's two and a half inches wide by one inch thick. We cut it to the interior dimension of the back of the nightstand here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over to the table saw and we're gonna cut an angle in it. That'll give us two pieces from the same piece of material. We'll glue one of them into the back of the nightstand and the other piece will be free and we'll mount that to the wall. You'll see really quickly after we cut this miter how the French cleat works. It's an awesome and super simple way to hang really just about anything. Most cabinets and kitchens are hung by French cleats. Uh, tons of different floating furniture is hung by French cleats. 
Um, it's super simple to make. You can make it really out of any piece of material. Uh, and it's an awesome and efficient way to hang stuff. I want the piece that we're gluing into the uh, floating nightstand to be one inch thick in the back. So what we're gonna do is measure out one inch on our piece of material. And we're just gonna move that over on the table saw here until the blade lines up perfectly with it. And then we're ready to go. Now that we have these two pieces of wood, it's a little easier to explain how the French cleat works. This piece is going to be glued into the back of the floating nightstand. That angle will be facing down, while this portion is against the wall. This piece will, will go and find a couple studs, we'll level it, and we'll anchor it into the wall with the angle pointing forwards. What we can do then is just simply set the nightstand over the block, and it'll slide down against the wall, and it'll stay just like that, pretty much without any other assistance. Just for safety, what we'll do uh, after it's hung and we like the way it's configured, we'll just drive one or two screws through the French cleat part that's on the nightstand to make sure that thing doesn't go anywhere. Alrighty, we just got the rough sanding done. The French cleat is glued in place. All we gotta do is just a little bit more sanding. Sand it up to 220 grit. It's sanded at about 150 grit right now. This thing is ready for oil here shortly. So a little bit more sanding, ready to go. The floating nightstand is done. All right, so we just sanded it to 220 grit. We got all the edges pretty nice and tight. The inside's all sanded. We got our French cleat glued in to the top interior of the back. And of course, we got our Schooner Creek Designs brand right on the bottom left corner. This thing is ready for oil. Of course, we're using our favorite Odie's oil. Not sponsored by Odie's oil yet, Odie's if you're listening, you know, you could always send us a t-shirt or something. We would definitely wear it all the time. With Odie's Oil, I always use two different uh, oils that they offer. Right here, I'm gonna use the super penetrating oil. Make sure that you mix it up super well. We use the white colored Scotch-Brite pads. Technically, it is the no grit. Uh, you can also use the black or gray one, which is like the 300 to 500 grit Scotch-Brite. Um, we just like this white one because it seems to work well for us. Alrighty, the floating nightstand is all done. This thing is uh, just super simple, but a really nice addition to the bedroom that it's going into. There will be uh, one of the nightstands on either side of the bed. And again, they're mounted to the wall with a simple French cleat. This is such an awesome project to try to take on yourself uh, at home. And it's something you can be super proud of putting in your own house. Uh, you know, it could be a shelf in the middle of the living room. It could be, you know, wherever you want to put it. Uh, it would be pretty easy application for, for just about anything. I just uh, temporarily attached the other portion of the French cleat to the wall in the shop so you guys can see uh, just how it mounts up and, and what it looks like. Other than that, the floating nightstand is complete. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for this video. We really appreciate you guys watching, liking, and subscribing. It's just gonna help us continue to put out this content for you. If you guys are just checking the uh, Schooner Creek Designs YouTube channel out for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you can see anytime we post a video, and we'll be back to posting regularly from here on out. Thanks so much, you guys. Mm -hmm.